Okay, so the, the recording has been shared. Oh, guys. So, okay. So we have seven here. Three years of experience in performance testing. Good. Uh, load on a geometer. Okay, good. Seven. Welcome. How about others? Guys, can we make it quick? Uh, just in last, in just next two to three minutes. I don't want a big detail. Just. Just yes, this kind of was like how the Siva introduced, like that's all brief so that I can understand. So Siva is three years of IT experience, manual testing, fair enough. Uh, Mina, four years of experience in JMeter. Okay, Mina, welcome. We have OKs, eight years of experience in testing, uh, API, functional testing, automation, performance testing in JMeter, perfect. Looks like we have performance folks. Uh, Haris from performance testing with one year of load and experience. I need to become SRE. Okay, good. Welcome, Haris. You can definitely uh, be on the, you just need to be on the right track. Definitely, you can achieve the SRE roadmap. SRE is a journey. You need to travel. Good. We have Rajesh, eight years of experience, want to be an SRE. Good. We have Siri, six years load on a J meter. Database testing. Wow. We have Neil. Uh, Database testing Neil has been doing and two years in PTNP. So Neil, which database you have been working on? Mong uh, relational or non-relational? MongoDB, Cassandra, or MySQL? So on the both types of databases, uh -huh. Neil, can you come again? Yeah, I, uh, I worked on both of the databases. Okay. And perfect, perfect. Good, good to know. Yeah. Okay, so we have Mina wants to understand how to do performance testing using AWS and JMeter. Okay, Mina, sure. I learned performance testing like Dodo. I'm planning to learn APM tools. Okay, Rami. Okay, guys, that's good. That, that's good to know about you. Okay, so see, understand this. So what is AWS? Okay, let's understand this first. Let's, uh, this is a very, what I would say the myth that we have around it. What's a big thing? I think just, uh, platform where you can get the infrastructure as simple as that earlier days right earlier days when there was no cloud service provider if you have a business idea okay if you if anyone has a business idea like jeff bezos the owner the, uh, the owner of uh, amazon the ceo the, the head of C, uh, the amazon if he has this business idea of amazon.com he had to set up his own data center there was no other option back then 20 years back then, 15 years, 20 years back then, there was no option. If you have a business idea, if you're trying to set up Amazon.com, you had to set up your own data center. Setting up a data center is a very costly affair, very, very costly affair. Billions of dollars gets invested. You need to purchase the land somewhere in the outskirts of the city, acquire the land, multiple acres of land, and then you need to construct the infrastructure, big infrastructure, multi-story buildings. You have to purchase all the servers. You have to purchase all the softwares, applications, right? You have to take care of the electricity 24 by 7. The cooling mechanism, the, the those servers will generate so much of heat. So it's a very costly affair. Setting up a data center is not a simple task. Okay, It's a very costly affair. So that... If you purchase, if you set up your own data center, if you invest your own hard-earned money in setting up a data center, that becomes on-prem for you. That is on-prem. We call it on-prem, right? So at the end, you get the servers. That's all you get. You get the server, then you take the server and like how your laptop is. Your laptop is also a server, right? Uh, if you run 24 by 7, this is a server. You can host anything you would like. This is also a mini, what to say, the 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 mini mini data center i should not say it's a two two sort um, uh, two less of a resource to call a mini data center itself but it's a server right so if you own the data center if you own the hardware if you own the resource that's on prem but if you use someone else like aws aws has set up data centers if you look at they have so many regions right um I hope my screen is visible. They have so many regions all across the globe. If you look at AWS global infrastructure, right? If you look at this, uh, they have infrastructure means they have the 
data centers all across the globe they have 31 launch regions these regions have availability zones they have 99 availability zones consider availability zone as data centers basically one availability zone is like one or more discrete data centers consider this they have 99 availability zones all across the globe people are making so so costly to, to even make one they have 99 so look at this all these regions they have this and the the red ones are coming soon they have they are coming soon in new zealand auckland uh, in india they have the data centers in hyderabad and mumbai right uh, they have a lot of az's all across the globe and they set up this data center so that uh, people all across the globe can go and leverage the servers so if if i want to create some servers in let's say uh, let's say if i'm trying to come up with an application where where i think the customer base is going to be let's say uh, in pa paris let's say that paris my customer base i have an application in mind which i think customer is going to be paris so i will i can being remotely located i'm nowhere near to paris but i can create some servers in paris using this console management console aws amazon web services have set up the data center the availability zones in paris but i can use this management console beautiful console and i can switch this region to paris i can come here and i can i can provision some service i can provision data load balancers i can provision auto scaling group i can provision databases i can provision kubernetes service all the services which is there at your disposal is here you can look at this when aws was launched they came up with three services only back in 2007 and just just mind you the background about aws guys uh, jeff bezos was trying to set up a data center for amazon.com i hope everyone is aware of this website the popular website retail website amazon.com he was trying to set up a data center for amazon.com and at the end he realized whatever he is doing for amazon.com he can leverage this the entire world he can make sure that he can come up with an idea of aws back then that it can be used it can be leveraged by others also that's when aws came it was one of his ideas then he came while setting up the data centers of amazon.com and they came up with three services back then it all just started with three simple services three services you know what were the three services can anyone can anyone name me those three services if anyone is aware anyone has any cloud experience before i'm just checking guys no no worries if you don't know i'm going to tell you okay no problem okay so i'm going to tell you now so the three services were ec2 elastic compute cloud right ec2 the first service was ec2 second service was s3 and the third service was sqs back in 2007 these were the three services aws launched ec2 is for the servers see either you are whatever you are you need a server guys you need a server either you want to install a web server app server database server you need a server ec2 stands for elastic compute cloud and look at this ec2 here ec2 is one of the service you can go to ec2 uh, ec2 stands for elastic compute cloud okay that's the short form elastic compute cloud if you go to azure they would call it virtual machine if you go to gcp they will call it compute engine for the same name the look and the look and feel would change but the core functionality would remain the same again azure has many data centers all across the globe gcp has many again many across the globe right but yeah the aws was the first guy here in this space to launch the first version of aws back in 2007 and they came up with three services can you guys take a guess now how many services they would have right now look at this okay i just want to take a guess i know it will be, you will not be able to um, exactly tell but just give, give, give me a guess guys how many services they have right now any anyone any guesses they have anyone replying let me just check the chat okay 
they have around 210 plus services right now 210 plus and they're still counting and they're growing 210 plus services now right now and as we speak they have 210 plus services and it's spread across everything everywhere all the machine learning look at the scope here they have machine learning they have internet of things game development front end web mobile so what is the future guys if you know any one cloud service provider for the career wise you don't need to worry about it you can just stick to only one you can just devote your career to any one of this and you will be good that's how it is because it's a growing thing it will keep on growing evolving uh, people would be always in the demand who knows these things in much efficient manner so just just to give you perspective right how big this is if you are a cloud and admin aws admin right uh, cloud uh, engineer uh, you will be always in demand right one of the core skill set that we have but as a performance engineer right as sra engineers we need, to, we need to learn more things one of the cloud architecting is one of the things that we need to know but as a cloud engineer also you can just think of a career right so what all services we think important for performance right a lot many a lot many first of all we need to know the basics of a lot of services we need to get started with the basics of we need to first understand the cloud first as i told you the definition what is cloud and how different it is from on-prem right so in simple words can i put if you own a server that is on-prem right if you own a server that's on-prem owning a server own a server if you own a server that is on-prem right and when you leverage someone else data center and use the servers as a, like a rent basis rent a server that's cloud as simple as that that's a simple definition at the end you are getting a server okay that's all on-prem or cloud doesn't matter whether i own it or you or you rent it you are using it you are using the server right for the timing you are paying to the cloud the, in the cloud when you use if you go to ec2 instances get them 10 servers to deploy your application it will be billed as long as you are paying the bill you can use the services right on prem you have instead you have to set up a lot of things and then you can own it but it's a very costly affair so cloud is what in demand and not everyone can afford to set up a data center that's why people or a lot many organizations are depending on cloud and to set up the data centers to set up the the application basically right we use cloud to set up our application to deploy our application on the cloud so that we can be available the business can up and running can get started very quickly we don't want the overhead of setting setting up your own data center right that's what the okay are we clear on the definition part why cloud where it fits in the ecosystem is it clear guys give me a thumbs up give me a yes is it clear for all of you okay guys. perfect makes sense okay look at this now so what is the what we're gonna know right think see i'm gonna list in this session let me because i have feel that uh, people are not knowing much of the cloud thing so i'll i'll keep the basics okay because that's what i have got the feeling that's the reason i asked you to introduce so i'll keep it basic so that you get the maximum out of this session okay i'm not going to uh, put a lot of uh, things here i'm going to keep things simple uh, since people are new to okay can i assume that you guys are all new to cloud can i assume that yes is my understanding fair is my understanding fair everyone so I'm getting a lot of yeses now, so I'm thinking in the right way, right? Good. So I'll keep things simple so that you you learn something from this. You should feel that one hour is worth whatever time you're spending here, uh, worth, right? So look at this. So how you should get started, okay? In the cloud journey, see, cloud is the future, okay? Either you are a functional tester, some of you are functional test. I saw API functional testing. Someone is DB tester, or someone is trying to do performance testing. See cloud you have to know okay there is no skipping it because any company you join today you are, the company you're working may not use cloud or they have on-premise right but the next company you're going to work on 
is going to be on the cloud based right or currently you're also working on the same setup so you need to know cloud okay then no skipping it either you're a performance tester qa engineer database engineer or any anyone anyone in the it you need to know cloud guys and the best thing to get started on aws the most popular again why aws why i recommend it's not the preference i have but the based on the job opportunities based because aws has the mar largest market share uh 40 to 50 percent of the market share if you if you uh, if you let's say interview with 10 companies uh, there would be five to six companies you will encounter they would use aws okay that's the reason i'm talking about aws but it's not like i don't love azure and gcp i for me it's equal okay because the way i work on we use multi cloud model okay we have infra in aws azure and gcp as well because we cannot afford to be uh, we cannot afford to have downtime so we are multi cloud okay. i'll come to that part why cloud right so you need to get started guys that's what i would like to tell you you need to get started on aws journey at the earliest that's would be the best right so how to get started so today i have started with the introduction part what is cloud and on prem i hope you everyone has understood this and one of the I'll, i'm going to just give you six services to learn okay uh, you can learn on your own or i can guide you on that as well uh, i have a dedicated course on um, i have i can i can just talk about that at the end but let me just give you six services that you should know must and must if you are anyone in it right the first six services that anyone would expect you to know uh, and they would be asking questions the okay. the first one is ec2 definitely ec2 ec2 people would be asking you right why you use ec2 what is the use case of using ec2 right so elastic compute cloud that's the first thing uh, so you use ec2 to create servers right you can use ec2 you can go to ec2 right uh, let me just show you i can go to ec2 or you can search for ec2 here first ec2 service i'm going to do one thing i'm going to list the services first here then i'll talk one by one so ec2 is the first service i have given you to know right very important guys. very important for you to know ec2 service stands for elastic compute cloud uh, this is where you'll you need to have the, some servers you can deploy this right elastic compute cloud and then it does not matter whether you have you deploying your infrastructure in aws or azure or gcp or on-prem the performance testing approach would remain the same if you know how to test microservices api based testing you know how to script in geometer right that should be all like ec2 is just a server you can Server could be anywhere. The application could be the same. You would be testing the application, not the server, right? In your testing, right? So the first service is in the EC2 instance that you should know EC2. How do you create server? Second, I would use, I will tell you definitely is VPC. The question which will be asked is the virtual private cloud. What is VPC? It's the networking solution. I am getting a lot of things. Just let me. Okay. okay so virtual private cloud guys so vpc so vpc so that would be the uh, second service i would recommend you to know what is vpc so every so either you use see you have so many regions i told you aws has so many regions every region has got a default vpc it's the network because see, you are creating a server, right? You're creating a server using EC2. I can go to instances. I can create a server, launch an instance. But how do you connect to the server? I'm not near Paris, guys. Trust me when I say I'm not near Paris. I'm really not near Paris. I'm in India right now. But I can create a server in Paris, right? And I can log in there. I can log in remotely to that server. Without network, is it possible? Do you think without network, is it possible? I can connect to the server. No. So VPC is the network around the Paris, right? The AWS has data center. So they have a network in the data center. And based on that, I'll be able to connect. So I can, I can restrict whatever IP or I would like to restrict that. I can do that. So no. So VPC, 
So one of the other service is the VPC. So I'm in the Paris right now, and every region you have the default network. You can create your own network, right? You can see this uh, for Paris. I can create my own. You can see this is the this is a default VPC. And when I create the server in VPC using this network, I'll be able to connect or my server can access the world or you can connect to the server. So that's important. You want to access your application, right? I want to access Amazon.com, right? Without network, you cannot access Amazon.com, right? So this is the VPC would be the second service. I would like you to know, learn, okay, what is VPC? It's the default networking. So this is the server use case. I'll tell you this is the server and this is the network default network. Okay. Then why do I use cloud? I definitely use cloud for the storage, right? Store. I want to store something on the cloud. Google Drive. What is that? You can store something in the cloud, right? OneDrive. OneDrive basically uses AWS. Okay. I hope some of you have been using OneDrive to store something in the cloud. So if I need storage. So we have multiple uh, services to store. The popular one is S3. Uh, we call it simple storage service. Again, S3 is one of the first services which was launched back in 2007. So simple storage service. You would like to store things, right? A simple storage service. Uh, that's the storage service we have it, right? Storage. Uh, so along with EC2, when you create EC2, you also need a disk, right? See, consider you EC2 as your laptop, right? Your server. So in your laptop, you also have an operating system, right? You also have a disk. You also have a RAM and the core, right? So EC2, when you say you, it means everything, the core, the RAM, the, oper the operating system, the disk. So the disk that you use in EC2, it is called EBS, Elastic Block Store. It's again one of the storage services that we have. It is the disk elastic block store. Again, it is for the use for the storage. The full form is elastic block store. And the use case is that it's a SSD drive or it's HSD, but we, we, we don't use SDD now, right? We always use SSD drive now because the IOPS, the input output per second IOPS is much better. The performance is much better. You can more you can do more reads and writes in SSD, right? So that's that's what when you when you provision EC2, you always select EBS. Uh, S3 is like a normal storage. You can store any media files, movies, uh, any GIF files, uh, photos, right? A JPEG, or uh, th those things you can you can store there. But whenever you create an EC2 instance. Uh, the way you will install the OS guys EBS like your disk like how you have disk in your laptop same way it's the storage right so I would like you to understand these things first and if I have to tell you the next thing which which is what you should know is gonna be uh, since you guys are from the performance background I would definitely tell you to know about the load balancer and auto scaling group okay definitely uh, learn the load balancer and auto scaling group that would be the again there are many services but if you could learn these things right these things whatever i have listed here the load balancer um, and auto scaling group because auto scaling group is what makes you auto scalable in production you test as a performance tester you test that you need these many servers let's say if you have you are expecting 500 user load or 500 tps whatever either tps or user load so you test for these many user load, how many servers would be required? And if you have these many servers con configured, what's the response time, right? What is the, do, do you see any errors in the log? How about the status code, right? You see, how about the CPU utilization, memory utilization, you check all of these things, right? And you basically use these tools to generate load. You hit the servers, right? And after that, you see how your servers are responding, right? So if you have auto scaling group configured, trust me, Apart from the benchmarking, you don't need to worry about if, what if, if the more load comes into the production. Because see, it's not possible. It's, it's very difficult if you have a application like Amazon.com, it's very difficult to configure one fixed server. 
right? You cannot mention, okay, maximum 500 servers would be required. You never know. You Amazon.com, the websites, the the such a scale, the user scale that it has, uh, the user load could be very max. Like consider IRC TC, right? Application, the way uh, we book the railway tickets in India, IRC TC website, particularly on the Tatkal days, right? Uh, we we get generate so much of loads on the system, uh, and you need so many servers, right? If you have auto scaling configured, you don't need to worry about it, and it saves the cost. When you need the servers, you will get it. When you don't need the servers, the the again the usage would be minimal, and you can save on the cost, right? It will auto scale based on the user load. So as a performance group, I would like you to know these things for sure. And if you want to know something. I would definitely talk about RDS, Relational Database Service. Know about databases, Relational Database Service. We have, again, it's a managed database service that we have in AWS, RDS. Um, I can show you, I'll show you these things. Okay, where are these things located? Um, apart from this, if you, since world is going towards container, containerization, so definitely, on AWS part, uh, apart from AWS, I'll tell you definitely learn about Docker, Kubernetes. Definitely, you need to know Docker, Kubernetes. That's going to be the industry standard. It's currently right now. Uh, you may not know that, but it is. It's every resume, uh, particularly anyone who's senior guy here, six years, eight years, they would understand what I'm talking about. In any resume you go, any domain, performance testing, engineering, you're going to find these words they would look for the skill sets. Guys, uh, am I right? Are you guys in line with me, the senior folks here? Yes or no? Anyone who has experienced this? Okay, okay is saying yes. Okay is agreeing with me. How about others, anyone else who agree with me? Okay, so if you don't agree with me, you need to get started on, on learning this thing. So maybe in one year or two years, or whenever you try to job switch, uh, you would hear these things, okay? On AWS part, uh, you have services, I would tell you on AWS, you have service like ECS and EKS. If you know these things, that should be enough, okay? So definitely you should know this in AWS, okay? Definitely. and. If I have to talk about something else, one more service, if you, if people would expect you to know, is the Lambda, Lambda service. It's a uh, serverless service. The Alexa device in your home, how many use Alexa device in your home, guys? Do you use Alexa device in your home? How many use Alexa, have, have used Alexa device? Just give, give me yes, no, guys, in the chat. I'm looking at the chat. Just do let me know. Neil has used, how about others? So the Alexa device that you use in your home is based on this Lambda technology. It will be idle when you don't use the word Alexa. It will be in the idle mode. The moment you tell Alexa, it gets activated and it uses and you when you say something, uh, what's the weather outside or what's the news, play me a song, it uses the infrastructure only for that duration. So that's the Lambda service. It is based on Lambda. It's based on Lambda service. It is one of the serverless services that we have, SLS we have. So that's all I'm going to talk about, guys. So if you are very basics, new to AWS, new to cloud, just make a note of these points. Make a, just take out time to learn and you will grow in your career. Right? That's what I would tell you. That's the take home message from this session, guys. Take a screenshot, take a snapshot and Try to explore these things on your own. Go to YouTube. There are so many videos out there, right? Uh, we have a lot of things. You just make sure you learn this thing, right? Uh, some way or the other, because that's gonna be the, that you would require this, right? So let me just talk something about these things, guys. One by one, okay, I'm gonna talk about these things. So easy to, right? As I told you, you're gonna get the servers. So look at this here. I'm gonna go to EC2. I'm gonna search for EC2 here. And you can come to EC2 and you can leverage this EC2 service and you can create servers. This is a beautiful console that you get when you log in to the AWS. Everyone can create a free account. Okay. Everyone can create a free account in, in AWS. Uh, you will not be charged, but again, obviously, 
they will ask the credit card details. Uh, they will not charge. They will only deduct two rupees, rupees, uh, just two rupees. You can just trust them, and it will be just good, right? So hardly a matter of two rupees, and you can start getting this console. And they have some seven fifty hours of compute time. You can provision EC two just seven fifty hours of free in one year. So you can go to instances and you can launch some service, launch instances, right? Uh, you can start with EC2. Uh, you can make make your name your server server one. Okay. Uh, you can select operating system of your own choice. That's how you can configure. Just consider that you are configuring your laptop, right? So you can select Amazon Linux, Ubuntu, Mac. You have so many options. You have so many options out there. You can select Mac, Red Hat. You can you have so many options out there for you, right? Uh, many many options you have ubuntu debian family windows operating system any anything you can use it suse linux so red hat you can just select any operating system i'm going to select ubuntu uh, one of the operating system okay i'm going to select ubuntu with the long term support i have selected the operating system 64 bit i have, i'm going to select this okay i have selected the ubuntu operating system that's what you can see this uh, Ubuntu operating system I've selected here. So, right now I can mention I can select the core and the RAM, right? What's the RAM and the core you want? Uh, so, if you want to be in the free tier, uh, they would ask you to use one vCPU, one GB RAM. That's what they will ask you. When as a performance tester, when you use top command, right? Top command you can see, or LS CPU command you can see, uh, or you use free free command in Linux. You can see what's the RAM, right? You have a lot many commands, but using these commands, you can see what's the CPU you have, LS CPU, right? Or free command, you can see what's the, but I'm just, I can go go ahead and go ahead and can select any, I can select two vCPU, four GB RAM. I can select all the way, eight vCPU, 32 GB RAM. I can use it. They're gonna charge it, obviously. It's not part of free tier. They, are, they cannot give you this big machine for free. For, for learning purpose, they are giving you free tier. You can see this free tier eligible, the word you can see here. I think everyone can see this free tier eligible word. So t2.micro is what you, they are asking you to use it. That's the t2.micro, the free tier eligible. You can select this by, right? Um, you would need to use a key pair that is must because that's the kind of a password you would require to log into the server. So you can go ahead and create a key pair I can create a key pair, let's say uh, ESA AWS workshop. I can just create this. Right. Uh, I can just like PEM format or PPK if I want to connect to PuTTY. PuTTY is again a third party SSH client. If I want PPK, I, I can select that. But if you want to use what AWS provide the instance connect, you can use PEM format and you can create a new, create a new key pair. That's all. So this key pair would be would help you to log in to the server because at the end you want to log in, you want to install some server, right? You want to install some application. That's what you want, right? So you can select a key pair. Uh, you can select some security group. Security group is like a firewall. You can control the traffic. You are creating a server. You would definitely want to control the traffic. Which all port would be accessible? Who can access my application? You need to configure this thing. It's about, we call it architecting security in the cloud. You want the control, right? You don't want anyone to hit the server, right? It, it will get, anyone can hack your server, right? You don't want that. You don't want to create vulnerable holes, security vulnerable uh, holes in your, for your DC2, right? So you want to be secure, right? I'm gonna, by default, I'm gonna create something. I'm gonna talk about it in detail sometime, but I'm gonna keep it default. And at then I want this. This is where your, the OS is going to install 8 GB, right? You can install 8 GB of disk here and I can launch the instance, right? I can launch this. So I keep it default and I'm going to launch the server. You can see this, I'm somewhere else, but I'm able to create a server in Paris region. Trust me, my server is getting created in Paris region. I'm nowhere near to Paris. That's the cloud for you. If you think your user base is going to be Paris, your Customer is going to be Paris. Why you want to create a server in outside away from Paris? Create a server there, install 
your application there so that the user would have would, would, would have the least latency the negligible latency right so you can see this i can this is my server it's running right now i can connect to this i can click on connect and i can go to instance connect i can connect and look at this i'll be able to connect to the server that's the thing look at this establishing connection you can see this and in some time it's done now i am able to connect to the server ubuntu server type ls vcpu you can check this right i i told you i have one vcpu ram right look at this i have cpu one that's all i have one vcpu that's what i want right uh, i can use free command free hyphen h uh, human readable format i can show you i have one gb ram this that's what one GB I have. I can show you df hyphen h command, the disk, the eight G uh, GB disk. Look at this total eight GB disk, and that's what eight GB disk is, right? So that's what my server configuration is, right? I can install some server, I can install a web server, I can deploy it, and I can test it, right? That's what happens, right? I can be a root user. Let me be a root user. The first thing I would like to do, I'm gonna um, so. Me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, update its package. So it's, it's a Ubuntu. I'm I'm gonna use apt update hyphen y. I can do this. Right? Look at this. I'm able to update its package. The operating system basically how do how do you do Windows update? Same way you can do uh, Ubuntu update, like updating the package of the Linux. Right? Now I can just uh, install some web server, app server, database server, whatever. Let's say I'm gonna install some web server. I can use apt install as Apache 2. I can do this. Apt install Apache 2. I can just make it yes. And I'm going to install Apache 2. It's a web server, right? Uh, web server Apache 2 by default runs on port 80, right? Um, I can just run it. Okay. So look at this. I'm able to. Okay. Just hold on. There is some. Okay, it's done now. Okay, there is some font problem with the instance connect. Okay, so it's done now. What I can do, I can do system CTL to check the status. I can do system CTL status Apache 2. What's the status of my uh, service? It's running now. You can see this, it's running uh, by default. It runs on port 80. Okay, I can do, I can check also which port it is running. It will be running on port 80. By default, it runs on port 80. I can do lsoft command to check which port it is running. It will be on 80 anyway. So all I need to do is to go to the security. First, the web server is installed on port 80, right? The web server, which I have region, right? It's gonna it have installed on port 80. So how can I access this port? So I told you something about security group. Remember, I told you about something called security group. Have I told you or not? So you need to configure security group, right? And you need to make sure that right you need to make sure that your port 80 is open why port 80 i'm talking about guys can you tell me why port 80 you can check this out okay you can go to instance connect let me show you the command why port 80 i'm talking about look at this else of hyphen i hyphen p hyphen n and you can just grip I'm gonna grab it to, to listen. Okay, that's what I want. Grab this to listen, and you will see that it will be on port 80 is where look at this on port 80. What is deployed? So guys, can you see this on port 80? What's deployed? Your Apache 2. Your Apache 2 is deployed. Which port? Can you guys confirm here? Looking at this. Which port Apache 2 is deployed? Can you guys confirm here looking at this? Anyone? Port 80, right? It's 80 port. So you need to go to the security group, open the port, and then you can access your application, right? And that's how you deep install something, right? And you do performance testing, right? You can do performance testing on this web server let me just open this port first 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the security group, edit the inbound rules, and I'm going to open port 80. I can give everyone the access right now in save rules, right? And go to instances, you take the public IP, the host and the port, that's how you will execute your application. This is the public IP of the VM and port 80. Look at this, that's the web server for you. That's what the default page, index.html of the server, right? So that's how I just showed you that you can install something and you can access. If I give you this URL, you'd be, you should be able to get this. You'll be able to get the same page. I've shared you the URL. Can you confirm that you guys can access the same page? Is it coming the same page? Please confirm. I would like you to please confirm on this. Right? It's the same server, right? So you can install app server, you can install database server, you can configure a three-tier application, you can test it, right? First thing, what you require is the server. EC2 was the service to get you the server and you can install whatever you want after that, right? VPC I talked about, it's a default network, right? Look at this here. In the networking, this is the EC2 instance. In the networking, I have something called VPC, right? That's my default VPC because this EC2 instance is in this VPC, default VPC of the Paris region, right? Right, and that's what importance is. And I talked about as a performance tester, what is important here, the load balancer and auto scaling group. If you configure your load balancer, let's say you have 10 servers, you, you have 10 web servers, let's say that. You got, you got three, 10 IPs like this, the way I just told you, you got 10 IPs. Will you be giving these 10 IPs to your end user? For them, they just did one IP. And that's, that's, that's when you use the load balancer. You will configure load balancer and you will mention about your these servers, underlying servers that you have, right? And you will give your end user only the word load balancer. So basically when you hit Amazon.com, right? When you hit Amazon.com, you hit the DNS. So again, for the DNS, they have a service called Route 53. So know about Route 53 as well. Route 53 is the service. You can purchase the domain. How, how we have Google domain, right? So Route 53 does the similar way. You can purchase the domain here and you can configure your application. So when you hit Amazon.com, basically what happens, the traffic, the request goes to the Route 53. The Route 53 is a service, okay? Route 53 again is a service. Look at, this is the service. So you can configure your DNS here. Okay, and the first of all, when you hit Amazon.com, the request goes to Route 53. It the Route 53 would know what is the underlying load balancer. So Route 53 would redirect your request to the load balancer. Then the request would go to the load balancer, and through load balancer, the request would go to the your web servers. That's what happens. The architecture, real architecture. This is what happens, right? So try to understand this. What I'm showing you. What I'm going to tell you. When a user requests. Amazon.com. Let's say I'm the user. I'm trying to reach Amazon.com. The first request goes to the Route 53. That's part of architecture. Understand the architecture. For any performance test engineer, you need to know the architecture, the flow. That's when you will capture the response time. Where is the root cause? What? Where is the problem? Where is the latency? Right. So the Route 53 would re redirect your request to the load balancer. Then user would hit the load balancer. It will the the user would get the load balancer URL, right? So this is not the way. So the route 53 would respond to the user that that's the load load balancer URL. Then the user, the your browser itself would read out your request to the load balancer URL. And then the load balancer would read out your request to all the underlying web servers that you have. Hundreds of web servers that you have, right? And you have all the IPs. So load balancer would request your request to all these IPs and then you may have application server also. So you may use two kinds of load balancer in external load balancer you can use to face the external traffic. Then you may use the internal load balancer also because you may have many app servers also, right? It's not that you will have only one app server. So you will use the internal load balancer here. Internal LB, I'll call it. 
So all the requests would, would come to internal LB, then the load would get distributed equally, right? To all the application servers. And then there could be database servers. You can have one database server or two databases, depending on the you can have. So that's a three-tier application basically. And that's how it, it happens. In most of the things, that's the basic architecture you have it, right? Let me show you one uh, architecture diagram, okay? We'll understand this. So I'm gonna show you with one of my courses, which I have a Sari Cloud PE course. Okay, I'm gonna just give me a minute. I am going to take you to one of the courses. I'm gonna show you one of the architecture, one of the general architecture that we have. Okay. Okay, look at this. What I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I don't have it here. Just hold on, okay. Give me a minute. Okay. I don't have it here. Basically, it's the same diagram I was trying to show you. I think I should have one, I'll get it. I'll make one. Basically, that's the same thing I was talking about, okay. So let me just brief you about this. So. I'm gonna if, if I put this correctly, correct way. So let me just put it correctly. Okay. So that's what this is the same diagram I was talking about. I mean a brief in a good way. I was representing it. So the external users would try to hit the route 53 first. The route 53 would respond with the load balance of the underlying the underlying server. It's just a DNS. So what is route 53? It's just a DNS. Okay. Uh, and then the, it will read at the request of the load balancer, the external load balancer, right? And then I will also have auto scaling group configured. It's a web server, W1, W2, W3. Uh, and then, then all these web servers, if I have multiple application servers, A1, A2, A3, A4. So internally, I will have this internal load balancer and then the request would go distribute equally to all the application servers. And then, then I, have, I have a DB servers, right? So I can have multiple database servers for all these applications. It's I can have relational database. And for these, uh, I can have the uh, non-relational database, let's say Mongo database as well. So it depends on architecture. So this is gonna be a common flow. And then you test, basically when you test uh, a load J meter or any uh, load runner, you hit this web server basically. And again, the request again goes via this same same route. And you get, let's say you see a high response time. So you analyze things, what is the issue? So is the issue is on the network or the application, you try to uh, try to filter things, try to narrow down your search, where is the problem? And you look at all the CPU memory disk utilization, the process level CPU memory disk, look at the, how about the, your silo heap, retained heap, depending on the application, Java application, you check for the silo heap, retained heap, if it's a Python, you check some other parameters, Node.js, you check some other parameters. So you do all those kinds of things, right? So at the end, what I want to tell you, if you want to learn cloud, you should get started with these things, okay? So auto scaling group is very important. From a, for a performance tester engineer point of view, auto scaling group is very important. That saves the cost. Why is it important? Because this helps us to save the cost. Understand this, right? Why it is important auto scaling group? Let's say you have a workload. Let's say you have an application where 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Let's say you have 100 user load coming in. And let's say you have benchmark your application and you, you think you require just five servers. Five servers. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Let's say you have the maximum user load, 1,000 users. And to support this, again, you require, let's say, 50 servers. And again, uh, 7 p.m. to next day, 8 a.m., uh, you have, let's say, 200 user load. And you require it's a 10 servers. If you are on prem, so five servers, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., five servers, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., 50 servers, and 7 p.m. to 8 till next day, 8 a.m., right? 10 servers. So if you're on premise, answer me question. If you're on premise, 
you're setting up your own data center. How many servers you will have to purchase? How many servers you will configure all the time to support the entire day workload? Okay, how many servers? Can you guys answer me? Five servers? Five, five, five servers only. Five servers only you'll configure in the on-premise? Yes. Then your load, what will happen to 10, 10 a.m.? You application will crash, right? Thousands of users are gonna come. Five servers is going only gonna support 10 hundred users. What will happen to your application around 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or during this time? There will be thousands of users. You need 50. You need to configure 50 servers, guys, to support the entire day workload. 50 servers always up and running in on-premise. But if you are in cloud, you can auto-scale. You can auto-scale. You will only configure five servers during this time. You will, you will have only 50 servers configured only for these nine hours. You will have to pay only for the nine hours for these servers. And again, during this time, you will have only the 10 servers. You're going to save a lot of cost because based on auto-scaling. So a very important thing that you should know is, is auto scaling, right? So you should you, you really need to explore on this auto scaling part and look at this. This is where you have this auto scaling. Let me just show you. Okay, where is my console? Okay, here is this console. So look at this. I go to EC2. And this is where you have the auto scaling group configured. You can configure auto scaling group. Auto scaling. You can configure auto scaling group. You can mention the parameters based on C. Your servers will auto scale based on a parameter. Which parameter you have defined? It's mostly the CPU based. It's going to be mostly the CPU based parameter. Because if you have five servers configured and if more you just come in, obviously there will be a CPU spike. Right? And you can base your auto scaling based on CPU parameters. Based on CPU, your servers will auto scale and you will only be paying for 50 servers only for the nine hours. You will do a cost saving based on auto scaling. That's the best benefit of auto scaling. <clears throat> right? Then you have RDS, you have multiple options, guys. If you want to learn RDS as well, you have relational database service, RDS. You want to explore this. It's a managed service, AWS manages it. You don't need to worry about its installation and all. It's so easy to just, you, the installation is no more a headache in the cloud, okay? It's all automated. That's the best thing, it's all automated. You don't need to worry about installation and how things would come. The installation headache that you have been seeing in on-premise has been resolved in the cloud. It's been uh, automated by the cloud service provider itself. So you can create a database, any database of your own choice. Make if you want Oracle database, get it. If you want Microsoft SQL Server, get it. Right. If you want um, Aurora, which is in out of the box AWS solution, you can get it. Let the page open. It's taking some time. Look at this. Or in the relational world, you have all the options. You can select. You can just select. Make the select the version, whatever you want the version, and you can just go on fill some details. And you can click on click on create database that's all it will create if you, the installation will be done in five minutes it you will get the database so you might want to explore all of this right uh, if you want to learn cloud being performance testing engineering right so that's all i wanted to cover today guys uh, before we go uh, let me just introduce you to my course which i'm coming up you can join the demo session okay? uh, just for everyone can yeah. just join the demo courses on the cloud PE, cloud performance engineering okay, and SRE. Uh, you can join these two courses. I'm going to share this links with you. You can go on your own pace to understand what all things we cover. We cover AWS, we cover Linux, we cover ECS, RDS, microservices, Docker, Kubernetes, EKS, Jenkins, Java performance engineering. We all cover all of these things in this course, right? Uh, 
So go on and check out some demo videos which I have pasted last batch, recently concluded last batch. Uh, and the, you can join the demo on 11th February, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. same time, right? Uh, go about the uh, all these feedbacks of my students, right? And look at the course syllabus. We, we talked about the cloud computing, we talked about the Linux, we talked about the architectures, what is monolithic application, what is microservices, we talked about the Docker, Kubernetes, performance engineering, Java performance engineering, right? We talked about so many things. So guys, I would like you to explore this, join the, join the demo session if you're interested. Uh, try to learn somewhere, okay? Uh, you have to learn this. Learning should be the priority number one, wherever you can learn. But I have collected all the requirements because I know I'm in this same domain for quite some time. So I know the requirement, what they ask. So you can explore this, right? So on the SRE as well, I have this course. You might want to explore this as well, this course. On a similar lines, okay? Some, ad some additional topics, okay? Since people were posted that you are interested, so I'm posting, posting both the links, guys. You can bookmark these two links, okay? You might want to join the demo session free. It's free. You can go over the recordings, and you might want to join the demo session on 11th February next Saturday. Is basically so that's all, guys, from my end. If you guys have any question for me, feel free to ask. Feel free to ask any question if you have for me. Uh, yeah, hi, Roshan. Uh, Mina here. Uh, go ahead. I just want to know, uh, like, uh, 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 we are having a project, like, we need to test a performance testing for a project where uh, we, it, it relates to the AWS. Mm -hmm. So, we have never tested using uh, AWS. Uh, so, uh, will it be covered in the free demo session, like, how to use that, how to test those things? So, mm -hmm. what is the pre demo process? session is about the course. Okay. So, demo session is about the course, okay. so introduce the course. Okay. But your okay. your requirement understand this, AWS is just a platform. You understand the problem, right? AWS is just a platform. You should know AWS to test it, right? Because web logic you're gonna deploy in one of the servers. You're gonna provision a server that you need to understand what how big the server could be, what OS that server needs to have. You're gonna install a web logic on the server like the same way I have installed it today, Apache two today. Okay. On you're gonna deploy your application, jar file, war file, er file, and then you then you're gonna test the application, right? So testing part would remain the same. JMeter script gonna be the same, right? The way. Uh, yeah. Uh, which means uh, like we can uh, record the script as as usual, right? Uh, using JMeter. Hey, so AWS is just a platform. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Huh, okay. Using Azure or GCP or on prem it does not matter. And the, at the end of the day, what you are deploying, you are getting on server. Okay. You will understand my point. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Right? It does not. No, yeah. Yes, Roshan. Yes. Just a platform. I'm clear, clear. Yeah. Just a platform, right? AWS, you can go to GCP also, right? Nothing matters. Go to GCP console. Go to GCP console. Go to compute engine. Get one server there. Install web logic there also. Who is asking you not to do? Right? It does not matter. For web logic, it does not matter. I can go to compute engine, get the server here, I can install web logic here itself. For okay. it does not matter where server is deployed, right? But they, they're asking you AWS, use AWS. For that, you should know AWS, the all the services that I have listed. You should be comfortable. Okay. All the things will be used. Okay. And you can test it the same okay. for testing in on-premise. Okay. Okay, Rosh. Sure. So, but uh, the thing is like when we generate reports or whatever, we can generate from our JMeter. Just we are using like a, uh, this AWS is a, what you said is like a platform where we can install our servers platform. and uh, we can create the database. Am I right? Platform. It's a platform to get you the server. And as you said, like uh, mm -hmm. auto scaling group, right? So here, so we, if you want to increase the virtual users, we can uh, how to like, usually in the Jmeter we used to uh, set the uh, virtual users and those things right. But if when it comes to here auto scaling you have uh, 
Yeah. Uh, said right. So scaling here, is auto, how to? Yeah. Auto scaling. You need to. Auto, don't confuse between two things. You are getting confused between two things. Load generator is one thing. The load generator. Okay. Right? You don't get confused with the load generator. Auto group is on the application side. Your application. See your application. Your the real user will hit your application, right? See, load JMeter is just a tool, just a set of jar files. You you will get one server. You will put your jar files here. You will try to generate load. Put load on this using load balancer. So basically, you wanna you wanna have you wanna create a script in JMeter, and you're gonna hit the load balancer. And under the load balancer, you will have a lot of web servers, app servers configured. You want to hit the only one URL at the load balancer URL, and internally it will redirect your request to your web servers, app servers, and DB servers. That's what's going to happen, right? And now, how many servers you require to inject the load? That depends on how big this JMeter box is. If the JMeter big, big JMeter box is big enough, eight cores, whatever RAM it required, because JMeter is a memory in, in, incentive tool, right? It takes a lot of memory, right? Heap. So if we, if this box is bigger, you can manage with one. If you need more load generator tool, you can create one more load generator tool. That's LG. Don't get confused. So this is LG part. Auto scaling group you configured for this, right? So you can test auto scaling group also. When you increase the load, whether your servers are getting auto scaled or not. This is the main thing, right? So this is just a testing thing thing you are doing. That will happen in production. You so this auto scaling group is related to server health condition, right? Not condition, right? So no. server resource utilization, right? Server okay. Why do you want to auto scale? Because four servers are not enough to support these many user load. That's why you would like to auto scale. Uh, yeah. Roshan, I have a query here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, uh, yeah, coming to the auto scaling part, right? So, for example, uh, if my, for example, I have on to my server wherein I am putting a load of, uh, what is it, suppose 100 V users, okay, and my Utilization. Okay, server side utilization, whether it may be a CPU or memory, it's um, scaling up to 70 uh, or 70 percentage of utilization. Okay, mm -hmm. suppose if my application is hosted on, um, uh, what is a EC2 instance, because you so, can and if what you you use two words on prem, what is on prem, what is in, in EC2, don't get confused. Uh, what is the what is the ask? Either you're on premise or, or you're on the cloud. Uh, I'm telling you uh, two scenarios. So tell me one by one. Okay, don't don't merge. Okay. One by one. Okay. okay. So so if I have this auto scaling uh, what is service opted in this one in my AWS, so then suppose uh, then we will not be getting any bottlenecks related to uh, what is resources, right? Correct. See, we, during the configure auto scaling group. Understand this. You configure auto scaling group. And you mention whenever a server utilizes a signal like 40%, 50%, okay. you can configure this threshold. You scale the server, scale up the servers. Scale up the servers from 4 to 6, 6 to 8. You can mention it. So as at the moment you have 40%, it will be auto scaled. Okay, okay. So then we will not be getting any bottlenecks related to uh, resources, right? Yeah. Server side resources. Okay. That's the main. Okay. 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 Uh, Roshan, I have a question. Yeah. The, the same thing. So yeah, because since auto scale enable, we don't get any kind of bottleneck on the server utilizations. So as a performance engineer, uh, either if, depends on the tool so on using uh, the application was using the different kind of AWS services as you mentioned s3 and uh, lambda and uh, the serverless so what kind of metrics we need to monitor it it all depends on the case right see on the cpu you have you're gonna take care of see 
First of all, what do you want to auto scale? You want to auto scale the servers. So for servers, the standard thing, CPU, memory, disk, you can see. And auto scaling is based on a parameter, mostly the CPU part, right? So again, these things you will in the load balancer, you will check. Okay, guys, I'm doing a lot of background noise. Can you please unmute? Okay. So uh, on the load balancer, I can check the status code, right? Status code, five, five not, five hundred, five, five hundred series, four hundred status, right? On the relational database. Again, S3 is for the storage. I would like to know how much we are storing the the what to say. The IOPS, what is the IOPS in the in the EBS? What is the IOPS? So it all depends, right? So depends on the service. My metrics would change for different different metrics. I'll have different different requirement. But for the auto scaling is concerned, I'm gonna auto scale the servers for that CPU is good enough, or any see in any memory sensitive metric which is the application is most sensitive to. I'll take care of that, and I will auto scale based on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Krishan. So in terms of like, you know, uh, S3 and the EBS, whatever, like, you know, the metrics, right? So how, as, as like, you know, how we have to give the, as a report, like, you know, um, previous See, was all, this. Like, first of all, you need to understand what is there in your architecture. Okay. Architecture. But you will not give if your architecture is not in S3. Why you will bother? Mm. Right? You need to understand your architecture components. And when you do performance test, what all gets impacted? So you need to understand that. Once you understand the architecture and the components it impacts, you can give the metrics about that. About how it's going to impact. Okay. When you put this much of load, it impacted like this, you impacted like this, it impacted this by this much. So you need to understand first architecture, what all it impacts, and you can check. We in AWS we have out of the box monitoring solution called CloudWatch. Okay, so CloudWatch is service we we use in AWS, which integrates with other services. So CloudWatch is the monitoring solution. People were talking about monitoring solution, right? So CloudWatch is what monitors everything. So if you have S3. You will see in the cloud watch. You need to configure metrics with auto scaling group. You can configure your auto scaling with every service right now. Let's say EC2 instance, right? I have an instance. you saw that with the EC2 instance, I can show you the cloud watch is integrated. I will show you this. Go to EC2 instance, select this EC2 instance, and you will see the cloud watch metrics. Look at the monitoring here, and you can see this metrics here. At the metrics which is coming up, right? The CPU utilization, the status check, all these metrics are coming up by default. That's the best part of cloud. Cloud gives you the more this is the cloud watch. It all these metrics that you see is for EC2 instance, and all the metrics you can see the CPU utilization, the disk read, the disk write. With every service, you will get this kind of metrics. You, you can report, you can uh, observe that and put that in put that in your report. Okay. Thanks, Sush. Sure. Okay, guys, that's all from my end. Um, thank you so much. So I have given you the links for these two uh, demo sessions. Join me next week. Okay, we'll go over the course, we'll explore the course, and we'll start the new course. Okay. So thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll meet next week. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rush. It was a helpful session. Thank you. Thank you.